Hey everyone, welcome back. Let's try another oblique, pro oblique shock problem. So we have this time as a flat plate and it's any Mach two point floor flow. Okay, so that's gonna be equal to 2.4, there we go. And it's at some angle of attack alpha. Now our question is, well, what is my max angle of attack to still have an attached shock wave? Because at some point it will detach. And like when it detaches, let's just imagine like this, it's going to be out in front. That's our shock wave now. So we want to know what's the max angle of attack before that happens. And if I have a pressure that's equal to one atmosphere to start, at that max angle of attack, what is my greatest pressure on that surface? Okay, now you might be confused, like, well, how do I know when it detaches? And the answer is diagram. Okay, seriously, go to the diagram. We're going to have to go to the diagram again to figure this out. And why? Because your diagram's been telling you this all along, and we just really didn't talk about it too much. So I'll go ahead and show it to you now. So I'm going to jump over to the diagram, and we'll look from there. So here I am in your textbook once again. I'm going to go to oblique shock and expansion fans right here. And I'm going to go to the oblique shock relation table because that's where, or sorry, section, because that's where I find this diagram, which is usually given in the problem statements itself. But I'm just going to go ahead and show you where it is in the textbook each time. Okay, now here it is. This thing right here has actually been giving you everything you need. And that is way, way small, but we're going to do our best with it, even though it's so small. So let me go ahead and draw on the screen. Screenshot. Catch full page. Beautiful. Okay. Did not want to erase that. There we go. So let's go ahead and move this over slightly. And we'll go from there. Now we have a mock of 2.4, and that is this line right here. And just so you know, this point, that point, that point, that point all the way down the line those are the points at which your oblique shock goes to a normal shock if you are somehow in front of that if your deflection angle is greater than um, the max deflection angle that can be possible for that shock wave so for that Mach number then it will be a detached shock and so just remember that so what I need to do is all I have to do is I trace this down as best I can all the way to the bottom so I'm going to do my best here we're going to figure out what the max deflection angle is using this chart. So I go all the way down here, and I got something around, uh, I don't know, maybe, okay, let's see. That's 32, that's 28, it goes by 4. So that would be a difference of 2, so that's a difference of 1. So it's like, it's almost one, but not quite one away from 28. So that's, I'm going to say 28.7, 28.7. Spoiler alert, it actually is 28.7. So if I look there, the max theta max for Mach number of 2.4 is equal to 28.7 degrees. Okay. So we figured out what our max deflection angle is now. That's good. We have it. Nice. And I also could have figured out what beta max was, that beta max would have been equal to 64.5. How would I figure that out? Just tracing it over. Tracing it over just like I did. You know what? What am I doing? I'm just going to show it to you. So going back up here, let's go up. And I'm going to go over, straight over as best I can to here, which is roughly 64.5. So that's how I found out where beta max was. That's how I found out where the max deflection angle was. I just found that point where it would detach, which is the right in the front of those curves, and I traced it left and down from there. Okay, so we have both of these now. And now let's find out all the properties we're gonna to need to figure out what's happening after the shock wave, because we need to find out what our max pressure is. And to do that, we're gonna to have to figure out what our change in pressure is across that shock wave. Okay. Ugh. So let's do this. First off, our normal shock, or shock wave, sorry, goodness. Our normal Mach number before it is gonna be equal to M1 
times sine of beta. And this is going to be the max beta here. So it's going to be equal to 2.4 sine of 64.5 degrees. Which is going to be equal to 2.17. Okay, we have it. Nice. And since I have that now, I can go ahead and calculate what my um, P2 for P1 is. So let's jump to Appendix B and find this, okay? So now we're going to use this and go to the Appendix. Appendix B. Okay, one moment. So we're going to jump to Appendix B here. Quantum shot properties when it's oblique because I need this to help myself. Ooh. Okay. So let's look it up here. Let's see. I need the P2 for P1, which is the first one. And I've got a normal shot component of 2.17. Now, ooh. I'm not going to find 2.17 in here. But I am going to find a 2.15. And you know what? Just for the sake of not having to interpolate, <laughs> um, I'm going to pretend like that's close enough. So this is the line right here, 2.15. Um, this is my P2 over P1 right there. It's going to be 0.5226. Just as a note, if you had interpolated, it would have been 0.5, or sorry, um, 5.3 instead of 5.226. So it would have been slightly different. Um, but we're just going to scooch that into the rug there. And I've shown you how to interpolate many, many times here. So cheating a little bit, don't judge me. Okay, so from appendix B, for a Mach number that's equal to 2.17, I get that P2 over P1, and as note, I would have had to do this by interpolation to get this value, is going to be 5.327. And therefore, the max pressure it can feel, the pressure just before detachment, is going to be P2, which is going to be equal to P max, which is going to be P2 over P1 times P1, which is 5.327 times 1 atmosphere. And with that, I get the max pressure is going to be equal to 5.327 atmospheres. Okay. Not too terribly bad. Hopefully this helps you, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.